Good morning, City Lights. Good morning, guys. We are just so excited to be here this morning, and we are so expectant for today. Yeah. But I am just hyped to be here with one of my besties. But first, my name is Danae, if you haven't met me before, and this is Patricia. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go with Patty. Um, and we're just going to jump right on into it this morning. So I hope you're ready. If you don't have your coffee, go grab it. Um, but Patty, I have a few questions for you this morning. Let's start off with how old were you when you knew you were a leader? I mean, I was probably a teenager when I realized there was something there. My mom and my dad would say that I knew it already when I was little because I would always tell the kids what to play with, where to play with, and boss <laughs> the boys around. I love that. I love that. Yeah, so if you have a little leadership. girl that's a little bit bossy, a little bit sassy, just know she's going to grow up to someday to be a leader, to own her own business. So just encourage that. <laughs> I, I just have to say amen to that. Because <laughs> she has two children like that, hey? <laughs> two leaders coming up. Um, funniest experience as a leader? Not with my team, but with clients. I was delivering a workshop in Qatar with executives, and in the morning, 8 a.m., as I walk into the room, my heel from my shoe broke. Oh my word, everyone's nightmare. So I nightmare. couldn't really stand, you know, to different levels. So I wore um, hotel slippers, you know, those white slippers thing, all day long, um, talked strategy and all that stuff in business clothes with hotel slippers. So that was quite funny because, you know, it kind of looked silly, but authority and leadership was there, huh? <laughs> so I guess that's just like, no matter what you're wearing, as, you long, as, you're, as long as you're equipped with Jesus, you'll be good. <laughs> no hills at all, just slippers. I love that. Okay, most impactful moment, uh, God moment in leadership? Um, when I have word, um, words of uh, you know encouragement or wisdom or, or prophetic word for clients. Wow, amazing. Yeah, I love that's that. That's really cool. That's so awesome. Okay, now guys, this is something I'm really excited about. Catalyst. I, yes. Okay, you need to tell me more because I've attended a few of the Catalyst meetings and they were so impactful to me, like highlights of my year. And so I need to know what's happening, what is it, spill all the beans. So guys, we're kicking off Catalyst this year um, with in April with a series of leadership training. We are going to do it a little bit differently than previously. Uh, previously we had sessions where we just came and were inspired by incredible people. This time we are going to get very practical and, um, and just get into training, leadership training. So we kick off in April with um, two important qualities of leadership, your motivation and how you build relationships. And we will do it um, April 13th, 20th and 27th. Okay, yes. mark your calendars. Um, Zoom, 7.30 to 9 p.m. Um, so if you want to join, send an email to Annaline at citylightsdubai.org. I got it, right? Yeah, I think you got yeah. it. Cool. Awesome. It's going to be very practical. We're going yeah. to work in groups. We're going to go through reflective stuff and exercises. It, you are going to love okay, it, real, trust me. Quick question. Yeah. Who is it for? Is this for anybody? Is this only for certain people? No, it's, it's you know, we've all been called to influence and impact. So mm. each one of us, no matter where we are, we've been called to leadership. I so that, yeah. if you feel that you want to be part of it because you want to grow as a leader or you want to step, you know, into leadership, in community group or whatever it is or at work mm. yeah just come amazing. be part of it amazing yeah. i love that i'm definitely going to be signing up attending awesome. done um okay one last thing color conference i know how awesome is this so awesome so if you don't know color conference it's an amazing conference put on by the amazing women in hillsong and has Lisa Bevere and Christine Kane. Kane this year, I think. I don't know yeah. who else, but those, those two. one more person, I just don't remember. I don't know, but yeah. Christine Kane, um, Lisa Bevere. We had Lisa Bevere at Bobby one of our Houston stars. For sure. Yeah, Bob, obviously Bobby Houston will be there. <laughs> uh, um, but it's going to be incredible. But I thought I would ask Patty, since she's actually been to a color conference before in the flesh live, 
Um, this year, obviously, we'll, we'll be online, but that means more of us can actually attend this yeah. year who wouldn't have been able to before. So, Patty, can you tell us your experience? So, I went to Color Conference many times, but two years ago, I was actually in London for work, and I've decided to stay over the weekend for the conference. And I was literally by myself in the room filled with, I don't know, 20,000 of women. And it was such an incredible and powerful time of just, you know, investing in myself, investing in my time with God, investing in the word coming in and me reflecting and me dreaming mm. and me worshiping and crying. And I've met a lot of other incredible women as well because mm. you know how it is. You always meet women. We talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I want to encourage you. You know, this is so accessible to us this mm. year. So take yeah, the time. Absolutely. This is for you. So guys... Invest in your wife, take the kids away. If if your men are away for work, get a babysitter. This is really time yeah. to sue into Absolutely. our life. And single ladies, this is for you. Do this. Mm. invest in yourself yeah. absolutely I love that so exciting it's gonna be amazing really good um, and girl power eh? yes Woo! okay guys we're gonna watch a video to tell us a little bit more about how you can sign up all about it so let's watch that video good morning city lights good to see you Guys, we are ready. We are ready to worship. We are ready to listen an incredible word of God from Dan today. And I want to encourage you, wherever you are, in the kitchen, in the living room, in your bedroom, outside, we might be in multiple homes and apartments, but we are the one house of God. Amen? So before we worship, I want to read up Psalm for us. Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2. And I'm going to read instead of I. I'm going to read we, guys. And let's take the time to just get into the presence of God, unite, and get ready to worship. We'll give thanks to the Lord with our whole hearts. We will recount all of your wonderful deeds, and we will be glad and exult in you, because we will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Amen, church? Are you guys ready? Let's do this.
every victory
Let it.
Just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hand. Majesty, Majesty, forever I am changed by you. of your majesty I'm singing majesty majesty your grace is found your grace is found me just as I am
You never change. Your love never, never change, Lord. We worship you. And we are changed by you, Lord, every day. Changed by your love, changed by your power, changed by your word. Never changing. Never changing word, Lord. There's always power every day. There's power in your word. Power in your love, power in your spirit, Lord. Oh, we glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, guys. Whew, such an amazing worship. I probably shouldn't have done that <laughs> to the microphone. Good to see you guys again. Well, good to see you. You know what I mean. Um, for those of you who joined us just now, Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to have you with us. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, even a special welcome to you. Um, thank you for being with us. If you want to connect, um, get to know us as a City Lights Church more, connect with people, um, become part of a family because City Lights is family, it's home away from home. Amen. So if you want to connect with us, there's a button on top of the screen that's called connect and uh, somebody will contact you. Come and join our community groups. Come and speak to us. We would love you to be part of our community. Guys, so I think, I believe the greatest sacrifice and the greatest gift we we received from God is His Son. And, you know, if He has given us His Son, we are giving and giving to build His kingdom in this world. And, you know, if, if you are if you are giving already to City Lights, thank you. You know, we're a generous church. We, we want to go out and, and build um, the kingdom of God and, and sow into people that need it. If you are still thinking, oh, is this really it for me? Will I have enough? <laughs> I've been there. I've been there when I was younger and I remember thinking, I'm just a student, I can't give. I mean, I barely can pay my food and my transportation to school. But God has taught me um, to give and I've received incredible blessing in this. And I want to read you uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 10, 11. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Just take the step, be courageous, give, and you will see how incredible blessing comes from just being generous and giving to to the church of God. Amen. Cool. So guys, in this season when we are not really gathering here in the warehouse, we really want you to be part of the community. So make sure that every week you make it to the Zoom community group. Um, some of you might be meeting once in a while, one-on-one -on -one in cafes. That is amazing built into that. We have incredible groups around the city that meet once a week. If you're not part of it, make sure you become. And there are two incredible new groups that are actually starting out in March. That's Andrew and Jade in Studio City and Nate and Bax in Miracle Gardens. So make sure that if you don't have a group, join in because these two couples incredible power couples you are going to become a family you're going to build incredible community and make life together um city lights prayer room has launched book your slot online uh, from monday to thursday and i'm thinking if i have forgotten something before dance comes up i think that's it dan are you ready for us how incredible is this you're probably not nervous at all when you preach every friday yeah ready <laughs> okay Dan shall we pray for you God we lift up Dan thank you for the inspiration thank you the word and the wisdom that you have pour out on him and he's going to pour it out to us through you Lord we pray that this word is going to touch us and teach us and Lord I pray for our hearts and our minds to be ready and prepared amen it's awesome to be with you guys again in your lounges. Let's not get too used to that. I was talking to some pastors this week, and uh, the fear, I think, in pastors is that people are going to enjoy being at home more they're going to come out having the discipline of coming out to community. But the moment we can get back together, 
We are going to be back together and it's going to be exciting. And there's nothing like face-to-face or mask-to-mask conversation, connecting with people, uh, meeting new people. I miss, I think one of the biggest things I miss when we're not gathering uh, corporately together, I know we're in community groups and Zoom groups and all of that stuff, but is meeting new people. And I want to encourage, I know Patty said it, but if you, if you are part of this, if you're joining on this community, it is an incredible privilege that you joining on online. We had quite a few people joining online, but when we get back together, it's going to be super, super exciting. Cool. Can we turn in our Bibles to John 15? John 15. Still taking a while, getting used to preaching to a few people at the back. They found the couches. It's great to have a small audience, um, but I know we've got an audience online, and we, we love you guys. We miss you. Uh, just to give you a bit of family news, Starla is... A few weeks away, we're hoping more, a few more than less of having our third child. And uh, again, I was with some pastors this week, and uh, I was just telling them, yeah, we've got two kids that are about 17 months, and we're going to have another one. And they all just laughed at me. And uh, so please just be praying for us. <laughs> Pray for the grace of Jesus to be poured out on our lives, that these kids sleep well, that I have the supernatural gift of being a mother and a father in a season where Starla is going to have to be fully involved with our new little boy. And um, yeah, just super exciting. And it's just uh, there's growth in our lives. So any advice on three kids would be uh, ideal. Um, anyway, as you can see, I'm, I'm working through some stuff. <laughs> cool. So I don't like gardening. Who likes gardening? If you want to raise your hands on the, the chat, you can. Uh, my dad is an absolute pro at gardening. Like every house we lived in growing up, it was beautifully kept. The only job I had was to pick up the dog um, um, mess. And uh, I don't know what I can say online, but the, anyway, the pick up the dog poop. And my dad made this special thing that you'd like, it would clip it and pick it out. And then, so that was my, that was my job. But uh, my dad just really loved the garden. They, they'll say what he has is green fingers. I, I have, when it comes to that, no fingers. I mean, that's just, I, I, I was walking around our garden the other day. And um, we, were, we were about to have some people over, so I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to clean the place up. We've got a high-pressure hose. I love using that thing for those of you who've got it. And our veranda was a bit messy, full of bird mess, and I was just kind of going for it. And, uh, and then I started to walk around and realized that there's quite a bit of neglect. So I pay someone to look after our, our yard, and it's not big, but it's, it's someone needs to look after it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not my gifting. It's not my, it's not my anointing that I, that I work in. And, uh, and I started to walk around, and I was like, oh, wow, this hasn't been done. Like, our irrigation has just been repaired, so that's, that's great in this little patch that we have. And, and it was just, and I, so I started to just look and realize, man, I've, I've, I've kind of left this task of making this place look relatively okay to someone else. And uh, God started to just speak to me in that moment, is that uh, this, we, as followers of Jesus, Jesus uses two illustrations. John 15, which we're going to read now, is about the vine. And, and he also uses the illustration about the different kinds of soils, which we may do at some point in the week. But it's, it's about the state of our heart. The state of our heart before him. The state of our heart, that, which ultimately reflects to others. And um, the Wesleyans used to say to each other, this is when John Wesley was preaching around the world, and uh, they'd get together in their, what they would call their groups, but it was community groups, and they'd say, how is your soul? And I want to ask you this morning, how is your soul? How is your soul this, in COVID, in work, some of you have lost jobs, whatever it is, we've spoken a lot, it's been a tough season for so many people, but how is your soul with your father in heaven. And what I started to realize, even in my yard, is that the things that I didn't want people to see, I hid away. And it was around the corner, and Stella's like, when are you going to clean that? I'm like, clean what? You know, like, guys have selective sight. We can, I can see, I'm like, I'm sitting, like, that, that looks good. And uh, it's the stuff around the corner, and it's amazing, because when you walk in, the, the neighbors can clearly see the mess, but I couldn't see the mess. And how true is that of our spiritual lives? Is that so often the thing that's glaringly obvious to others is not obvious to us. It's why we need to be in community. It's why we need to be connected in. It's why we need to take time uh, and maintain our garden. If we call our soul a garden, we need to water, clear it out, prune it, churn the soil. You can see I'm not a gardener, but let's, let's, you know what I mean? We have to look after this, our heart, because everything flows from our heart. And that's why we're talking about prayer and the presence of God. It says in Mark 8, verse 36, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? 
Our souls are very important. There's, uh, you have your, the, the soul is, the, is your heart. It's the, the inmost being. It's the thing that gets connected to God. It's the thing that's going to be last forever. It's, it's, it's who you are. How is your soul before your Father in heaven? How is my soul? And I, I've, I've started to read a book called Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership. You can see where some of my thoughts are coming from. But it's by a lady called, I think, Ruth Haley Barton. And it's a really good book. But uh, she just speaks about, and it's specifically to those in ministry, and I think it can apply to anyone, that we can begin to rely on, on gifting, previous knowledge, and it'll get you so far until you get to a point where you actually need the thing. And if you haven't been digging the well, if you haven't been abiding in Christ, which we're going to learn about today, all of a sudden, you, the, thing, the very thing you need, you don't have. It's like when you walk into a shop and you've got, you're like, okay, cool, I'm going to pay for this. And then you get your bill and it's your groceries for the month. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't have my card. I don't have my card to pay. My Apple Pay stopped working, which is annoying. But I don't have my card. And how many times that that's happened? And I'm like, I have to run. Oh, have you got the card? And, and, or when, with us having babies, um, Starla is still very much working in between that. I can never switch her off from work. And uh, when she has that moment, she's got like a two-hour gap while the babies are sleeping midday. She goes, she opens her laptop, and it's flat. And so often it's like that with our souls and our, and, our, and, our, and our soul before our Father in heaven. And if you look at the past few weeks, I've been speaking about big prayers and Elijah going up mountains and all of these things. But I, I almost want to bring a bit of a pastoral word to us this morning and just to say that we actually... We need to learn to cultivate this thing in our hearts. We need to learn to cultivate our soul before our Father in heaven because it matters much. The, and I did a, a bit of kind of tr- study on this, not study on this, but trying to find a really simple definition of the second law of thermodynamics. There's not much, for those of you who are much smarter than me, you can come and rebuke me afterwards. But it's basically this, that it's the second law of thermodynamics that anything left to itself will decay. We can see that in ourselves. Like, and Facebook's interesting for me because you know, sometimes we're going through it and, like, and uh, you, you click on something and you're like, wow, that person's looking old. I went to school with them. And you're like, wow, they're looking super old. And I'm sure that they're looking at my Facebook profile and going, Dan looks old. He's got a gray beard. What's his story? The, the fact is we are, we are, in our physical bodies, we're getting older. It's, it's, it's one of these things that I eat less and I, and I gain more weight. I don't know what the story is with that. It's just a strange thing that happens as you kind of get and you slowly approach 40. Now, 40 is young, but the fact is we, we are, we, and our bodies are wasting away, but the Bible says that we are, being, we are a new creature, we creature, new creature under Christ, and we be, we're being made new under Him. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... That is, I'm reading out the Amplified, grafted and joined to him by the faith in our Savior. He is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come. There's a spiritual awakening that brings new life. And the word for have come is the word genomai, which means to emerge to become, to transition from one point or one realm to other. So when, when we get saved, when we, when we step into Christ, when we give our lives to Him, we, get, we, we are immediately adopted as sons of God. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. He, um, we have all access to the, the whole of heaven. Uh, we, are, we are made righteous before God in a moment. It's got nothing to do with our works. It's got absolutely nothing to do on our part, but just approaching Jesus in faith and saying, I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you rose again. We're going to be celebrating Easter soon. And it's all of these things. And, it's cel- and it, you, in that moment, you get made anew. But yet, so often your life doesn't look like that. And I've met people who've been following Jesus for a while and, and realize, man, you can be saved, but you cannot act like a Christian if there's such a thing. And I think, what is that? And you don't want to get into like this legalistic thing, but I, I honestly believe that the secret from, from, if we're moving from one realm to another, so we are already in this new realm. We are already sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are, we are changed. We are, we are new. We have been made new. What, what is the thing that gets me from here? Dan, who is a sinner, who, who, who's, who's prone to wonder and all of these things. What gets me from here to this place here? I'd say, first of all, it's a lifetime commitment. It's, it's, it's not overnight. I wish that when we got saved, we were like immediately, 
You just like, you know, like you give your life to Jesus. Imagine we were like in the hall and you're like, put your hand up and there's just smoke that comes up and you're just this new creature and you're perfect and you're nice to your wife and you don't get irritated with your kids and you've got so much patience. Oh, Rocco, stay awake the whole night. I've got so much patience for you. I'm not going to get angry even though you're not even two years old and you've got all of these things and like, it's not like that. It's a progress. And I think so often people get saved, but then they get stunted because they don't learn to, to press into Jesus. Because as we read now, that Jesus is pressing into us, but we need to press into him. We need to push our hearts. We need to lean our affections towards our Father in heaven. And for me, the secret, and I'm learning this, and I'm a work in progress. For those of you who know me well or know me a little bit, you know that I'm on, I'm on a journey, Okay. But I also know you, Fred, laughing at the back there. And uh, he's also on a journey. And we're all on a journey to becoming this thing. And I'm saying, as, a, as, a, as followers of Jesus, as, as those who are part of City Lights, we, we are, Ryan and I spent some time about what is discipleship. And discipleship is simply this. It's, it's follow me, follow Jesus, and I will make you. There's this process of sanctification that never changes. And I will make you fishers of men. It's purpose. So the last two, that I'll make you fishers of men, work simultaneously together. And we, as a lifetime commitment, abiding in Christ, pressing into Christ, begin to become like Jesus. And I, I want to say that it's, you, you have to look at yourself not in week by week, or day by day, or month by month, but in years. So the things that affected me last year, that I got irritated with, that would cause me to stumble, or whatever, whatever kind of, is that, is that you've actually spent time with Jesus, that he's reformed your heart, that you are a different person for what you were last year. So I would say we are, we are in this point of the middle, the middle is that I'm, I'm better than I was, okay? I'm perfect in Christ, as like this thing that's just happened in the courtrooms of heaven, but yet my body and my soul is catching up, and it's a lifetime to become, to emerge into something, to emerge to become like Jesus. Mark 7, 6, we will get to John 15. Mark 7, 6, it says, These people honor me with their lips. He's talking about the Pharisees, but their hearts are far from me. And that convicts me to my soul as a pastor, because I've been doing this for 10 years now. And I won't say that I can fake it because I don't think I'm very good at that. But you can get up here and you can, you can rely on memory. There's a sense of muscle memory. You can, you know, even as a worship leader, you can play the guitar and like do all the things that look spiritual. But our hearts can be far from God. And I never want that. And I feel God continually keeps drawing my heart back to him. He keeps drawing who I am, saying, Dan, remember when you got saved what you were like. You used to spend hours on the floor worshiping me. God says, I'm bringing you back to that place, the first love. And I want to say this morning, there's those of you who feel like you're getting a little bit cold, repentance is the way back. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So John 15, let's read this together. It's the vine and the branches. It says, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. Just look at all these characters here. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain, the word there's abide, in me and I in you. Just as a branch is, is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it, is, it remains in, on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him will produce much fruit. You can say at home, much fruit. Because you can do nothing without me. That is crazy. We have to dwell on that. We can do nothing without Jesus. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, they throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, and the other version says that I remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. See, the problem with reading stuff out of context in the Bible is that you can look at that. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit and you prove to be my disciples. And those of us with a works mentality we we'll immediately go, okay, cool, I'm going to prove something. 
Now that's, that's, that's out of context. What, what Jesus is talking about is learning to abide. So my first point is this. We need to learn to abide and to remain. If you look at Jesus, for 30 years, he was, a, uh, let's just say from 12 to 13, 16 years old, he was a carpenter with his dad. Now the word for carpenter there is actually tecton. It's actually stonemason, because if you look at the time of Israel, then they didn't have much carpenters or need for carpenters, but there were need for stonemasons. Jesus hammered rocks. Jesus built houses. Jesus built furniture, whatever your, your view is. But he had moments of, of, let's call it from his whole life, because already at 12 years old, he was already in the temple and people were confounded by his wisdom. But then you have the silent years of Jesus from 12 to 30 years, 18 years where Jesus was in silence. And what was he doing in that moment? I believe is that he was learning to abide in his Father in heaven. He's like, you're a son, you are the one and only son. And he's learning to be close to his Father. Because he had three years of ministry that changed the world. And if Jesus needed to learn to abide, how much more? And the wording there is, is to keep in step with the Spirit. If you're charismatic, it's to, it's to be in Christ. It's to, it's to be planted. It's to be grafted into the vine. It's all the same language. But if you want to look at what it actually means, it just means to remain with Jesus. It means to just be with Him. And learn to train yourself. And I'm getting better at this. I'm not perfect at it. But be aware of God's presence every moment of your life. And we've seen, and not to bring up kind of negative stuff, but we've seen kind of some really profile ministers fall recently. And I, you can look at whatever the reason is. And if like greater men than me have fallen, I have to be careful, all that stuff. But I honestly believe that it's your closeness to Jesus, your, your closeness to your Father in heaven, that He can see through all the mess. You can maybe be putting up a front. And you may be pretending around something, but God sees your heart. And we can just, we can learn to just rest and abide and no effort. Bill Johnson says that nothing in this life as a follower of Jesus is gained through striving. It's gained through resting. We have to learn to rest in his presence. Talking to myself, who can wake up and immediately start thinking, I need to do this. Uh, like, Star's been amazing. Um even in this time of her being very pregnant and with the twins, is she just knows, I just need, when, we, when the babies wake up and they're getting wake up earlier and earlier, we get, the starter goes and sits in the lounge with them. She's got her ear pods in. She's spending time with Jesus. I need to go to my room and I need to stare out the window. I need to spend time in silence. I need to pray. I need to read the word. I need to hear what Jesus says first before I approach the day. It's abiding in him. The, the Jews have... Uh, so the Orthodox Jews, they have ways of remembering that God is with them. A lot of it, I'm sure, would get religious, but they'd, they'd, they'd play, their, what, is, what is that thing called? Yeah, they would have these trellises around them, and basically these were like, I don't know if you guys have seen them, but kind of attached to their clothes, and it's on the four corners, and it's representing the four corners of the earth, but it's also representing the 613 commands that they need to follow all the time. I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, the, the amazing thing is that we, under Christ, we follow the Spirit. We, uh, we begin to follow and do those things because we are following the Spirit. But they had ways of reminding themselves. They would pray in the morning, pray in the evening. The Lord God, He is one. The Lord God, what does it say? I'm going to get this wrong. Sheesh, I've really lost my point. Anyway, they would have these things where they would just spend time with. They would know they need to spend time with their Father in heaven. I was uh, sitting about two weeks ago on a Sunday night. And uh, what I love about this whole online church is that there is so many churches that are streaming live. And, uh, and I was just, I just put Rocco down and I was waiting for him to fully asleep. And I just kind of sit there in the dark and I've got my, my, ear, my earphones in and I, I saw Vineyard Anaheim and I clicked on it. And a guy called Alan Scott is preaching. I caught the like five, 10 minutes at the end. And then uh, Jeremy Riddle gets up and leads worship. And as he starts to lead worship, I was filled with the presence of God. Uh, and it was just, the, it, it felt like I was in a, one of those kind of revival meetings, but yet I'm on, on my bed just lying there, just kind of under the power of God. And I was like, God, what is this? And, uh, and I was kind of in that half state of sleep, and I felt God say, it's because you've, you, in, in a sense, your mind is kind of relaxed, and I'm able to get straight into your spirit. 
and begin to fill you and begin to fill your heart again and begin to give you peace and hope again and vision and all of these things. And the, the, the point is, I often go and look at cooking shows at night. It's the way I relax at night. But that night, I just felt like I need to just get into God's presence. And it's one of these things. It's the daily disciplines. Like vines just don't grow haphazardly. They have to be on a trellis. They have to be upkept. They have to be looked after. And the trellis for me is daily disciplines. It's taking moments in your day, whether it's the morning or the night or whatever it is, where you're alone with Jesus and you learn to abide with him. Number two, we are clean by his word. And that Romans 3.20, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, verse 24, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. John 1.12, yet to all did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. When Jesus speaks his word to us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the thing that made his disciples clean. They believed his word. It's all by grace. It's not through striving. So if we have to realize that, like I said in the beginning, we are, we are seated with Christ. The moment we give our lives to Jesus, we are with him. But we need our bodies to catch up. We need our souls to catch up. How is your soul this morning? Number three, we have to allow God to prune us. We have to allow God to prune us. This is often when people come unstuck in following him, is that they go through tough moments, and I'm not negating tough moments because some of you have gone through way more tough moments than I've ever had to walk through in my entire life. But it's those moments of unsurety, God, where are you? This is not how I planned it to be, is that God is doing his deepest work inside of you. James 1 verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may become mature and complete. God disciplines the ones he loves. And we don't like that word in our overly PC world. Is that, oh, you know, God's just Father Christmas in heaven and he's happy and it's just full of love. Yes, God is full of love, but sometimes love is strong. Sometimes God sees our future. Now, imagine I just let my kids just do what they want to do. They're going to, be, they're going to get, eventually get to school and the teacher's going to go, what kind of kids are these? You haven't disciplined them. You haven't. I see their future. I see Rocco, Ryan, and you little boy's future. And because of that, I'm able to bring discipline. And discipline is love. From, and, and if I'm a, a, an earthly father who is tainted by sin, who is who's, who's still stumbling forward, trying to figure this thing out, how much more does our perfect Father in heaven who sees the end of our life and sees the possibility of what we can step into, and he begins to discipline. And, and so often people, it's like in Romans 12, it says that we need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And so often people go to the altar, but then they immediately get off the altar. It gets too tough. They get off the altar. They go back to old ways. They go back to doing old things because that's more comfortable. That's where I find my peace. That's where I find my joy. And then they eventually get to a place and they get on the altar. And there's never a moment where they can say, I'm a living sacrifice before my Father in heaven. Allow God to prune us because pruning brings life. Pruning brings more fruit. And if we allow this, the, the moments to fully work itself out in our lives, we will see that God is working deeply in us. Repentance is a gift from God. And at some point we'll talk about repentance and do a whole teaching on it. But Stalin and I have been talking, and it's always like, you know like when you have, before you have kids, you have the best theory about how to bring up your kids, and then you have kids and you're like, no, my theory doesn't work, and then you're like, Guys, just give me grace. I was just like that before. And so I'm looking at the future of our kids. And like we're just thinking like in this world that in many ways, and you could talk to parents of teenagers now, it's getting darker and darker. And uh, the things that we used to, uh, we never had to deal with as teenagers or in our early 20s, they, the kids are dealing with it in 13, 14 years old. There's, um, there's an assault on, on truth, on the truth of uh, sexuality. There's, there's all of these things. And so I'm like, man, in my mind, I'm like, what I'd love to do is lock up my kids, 
make clothes out of curtains, and just let them chill at home, and that's it. They don't get exposed at all to the world. But that's, that's not the way that the Bible calls people out. God, it says, it's, I think it says in Philippians that they're going to shine like stars in the universe as they hold out the word of life. And we keep praying that over our kids. And how are we going to get them to that? We're going to have to teach them how to fight. Stahl is big on this. We, we have to teach them how to fight battles. We have to, and Stahl was listening to this um, parenting podcast and this, the one guy said, we need to p- learn, teach our kids how to pursue the Holy One and not pursue purity as like some kind of goal. Because they will mess up, they will stumble, but they have, if they're pursuing the pure one, they know that they can come to Him with absolutely everything and they have this gift of repentance. They don't need a hard stuff. They can come to their Father in Heaven and they can say, God, this is who I am, this is what I did. I don't even need to tell you because you've seen it already, but this is who I am. And if we teach our kids that, we're teaching them something that is way more valuable than having a purity ring. Do you guys remember that? Those purity rings growing up. It's like, oh, let's get a purity ring. I don't mean that means nothing. Okay, that's just an outward show. But if you're teaching your kids to repent and walk with Jesus like we do, what an incredible gift. Again, talk to me in 15 years' time and see if we've got it right. Because <laughs> we will see. But that's what we want, okay? Um, number four, we can't do anything without Him. We cannot do anything without Him. That is um, an incredible statement that you can have a resemblance of fruit. Now, it's amazing when Jesus said, He's like, uh, so people will come to Him and say, But I prophesied in your name and I, I healed people in your name. And then Jesus says, I never knew. Get out of my presence. I'm paraphrasing there is that we can, you can have the, the outward show of fruit, but your heart is not in the right place. How is your soul this morning? We can't do anything without Jesus. David writes, I think in Psalm 27, he says, one thing I desire, and this is I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, house of the Lord forever, that I may sit at his table. And I, it's, it's, it's crazy because David could have asked for anything, but he asked for the one thing is that, God, I want to dwell in your house forever. I want to be in your presence forever. Are we a presence-focused people? Because that's where our heart, the moment we lean our hearts towards him. Verse 6, it says, If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They will gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. No one likes that verse. Because it's like, oh, isn't God gracious? Yes, He is. But He also gives us ways out. So this could have three different meanings. This could be once that they once saved and they fall away. It could be that they're pseudo-Christians. And that could be almost pointing to Judas who kind of acted like a follower of Jesus, but his heart was actually far from him. Or the third, as commentators say, is that it could be wasted lives as followers of Jesus. I mean, it could have an element of all three. It's like wherever your theology sits in that I don't believe that once you're a son of God, that gets taken away from you. So, but I do believe that you can be a follower of Jesus and live a, a life that's wasted. That you can know him, that you can know his truths, that you can know, but you, because you're not learning to abide in him, remain in him, dwell with him, your life can also have no massive impact, which is what God's plan for you and me is. Five, six, and then six, and then I'm going to be done. Fruit is a byproduct of intimacy. Fruit is a byproduct of intimacy. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself, it is a gift from God, not by works so that no one can boast. So there's the grace side. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Intimacy with God will equal fruit for him, for the kingdom of God. It's, a, it's an immediate thing. If you, if you just think about being grafted into the vine, you have the nutrients, the life, and the flow, and you don't just do it for nice uh, grape leaves, okay? As, as nice as kind of those Lebanese vine leaves are, that's not the, the point of a vine. The point of a vine is fruit. And what is the point of that fruit? It's wine. Wine's always a sense of God's presence, his power, his uh, celebration. It's also what's inside most grapes, unless they're genetically kind of uh, engineered, is that there's seeds. Is that as we spend time with God, it's not only for us, but there's seeds of multiplication that goes in and from us. We give away so we can see the kingdom of God expanded across the world. 
Abiding, like I said, is not solely on us. It says that Jesus remains in, in us as we remain in him. And he's as committed. And I've just been reading through the patriarchs lately in, in Genesis in my reading plan. And it's just a, amazing to see how God is so committed to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, even though they keep messing up. They keep repeating the same sins of their forefathers. And they, Jacob was this deceiver who deceived for a birthright and all of these things. And God is still committed to him. And I was like, wow, God is so committed to us. He's so committed to our future. He's so committed to what we're called to be that, he, that He'll never, ever let us go. He will always bring us back to Him. Josh McDowell said something profound. He says, God doesn't need us. He desires us. We always think, well, you know, God's going to use me in the ministry. No, don't, don't think of it as like a using thing. God doesn't need you or me because we, we all are indispensable. We all are dispensable. Is that the right word? We can all be taken away and things will keep moving forward. God wants intimacy with us. God wants to, he desires us. There's a, and we've got some wine experts in the room, um, but uh, there's the oldest vine in the world. It's in Maribor in Slovenia. It was planted 400 years ago. It survived the Ottoman Empire, the Napoleon Wars, World War II. It escaped many diseases and fires, yet this vine still produces wine 400 years later. And when I look at that, is that this vine's been looked after. Now the vine that, the, the wine that it produces from this vine is, uh, is like, is for VIPs only. It's only, it's like, it's these crazy celebrations. It costs a lot of money. There's, the, the, the town basically looks after this, this whole thing. And it's like, I was, I was thinking of that and saying, when I get to my 70s and 80s, I still want to be accounting for God. I still want to have my heart on fire for Him. And it's going to come through abiding. And then finally, as we end, when we pray, he answers us. Verse 7, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. The crazy thing there is that if, if we get the abiding thing right, we get the intimacy thing right, is that his desires begin to come, become my desires. And we pray his desires thinking it's our desires, but we're actually praying his desires and then God starts to answer it. The, the, the fruit of abiding, the, 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 the fruit of closeness is that Jesus begins to answer our prayers because we're not just praying just for ourselves and just for our future and just for all of these things. And it's good to intercede on all of those things. And you can bring any prayer to Jesus. But I think the closer we get to him, the closer we get to hear his heartbeat and what he's thinking, we begin to pray his prayers. Stahl and I have been married for 13 years. When we first got married, we didn't think a lot alike. But now, 13 years later, we think a lot alike around a lot of things. We almost don't even have to talk about some things because we know what we both think about it. And those of you married longer know that the same story. That as you grow in intimacy and closeness with someone, you begin to think their thoughts. Now, we will never influence Jesus' thoughts. He influences us. What a privilege that we get to walk, to walk with Jesus. Pete Gregg says, I'm not into prayer but I'm into Jesus. And this whole series that we've been doing, it'll probably carry on towards the end of March. We've got some exciting stuff past that. But I just keep praying that there's this, a spirit of prayer that comes over our community. And there's, there's lots of avenues that you can get involved. We've shared about the prayer room. There's a prayer and fasting team that you can join uh, every, every day of the week. Am I right, Annaline? Um, you have, uh, there's other prayer stuff. I should have written this down. There's many areas of prayer. There's, uh, we, we, we started now. We're going to pray online at 9 o'clock. When we get back to the whole meeting together, we're going to continue to have prayer meetings. There's some organic prayers that are just starting to happen. There's men that are meeting out in the desert. There's community groups that are praying. We're, we, the, we will not move forward as a church if we are not praying. But praying first and foremost starts with our Father in heaven. It's closeness. It's intimacy with Him. It's our hearts connected to Him. Let's pray together. Father God, as I've spoken all of this, Lord God, I pray that it would live more deeply in my heart. I want to be closer to you. I'm trying to do that right now. Just if you're at home, maybe put your hand on your chest and say, God, I want to be closer to you. Don't say it because I'm telling you. Do it because you, you feel like you mean it. I want intimacy with you, God. I want to live from a place of rest.
from a place of closeness. Stuff that this, those who aren't following Jesus will never experience until they start following you is that just this peace that your word says that surpasses all understanding. Because everything is going to be all right, Father. You are in charge. You're in control. I pray, Lord God, that we would learn to rest. Would you give us that same resolve to seek you in a place where you were in the boat, the storm's raging, but you had fallen asleep? Thank you, Father. Annalene came and spoke to me. Every night, one of the things we, we value is prophecy and words of knowledge. And so I've asked the team, whoever's here, um, and I just spoke to the staff, but if you've got a prophetic word to come share, and I know Annalene's operated in this before, do you want to just come and share what you feel, Annalene? That would be awesome. Hey, um, I don't know for who this is. Um, I might have it wrong and stuff, but I just see a book and... Um, this book is full of dust and God is taking this book and he's blowing over it and this book comes to life and I can see as the pages turns it's becoming full of color and just beauty and I get um, a picture of a helicopter so I don't know if this is for the person that I think it's a pilot of a helicopter I'm not sure or a medic of a helicopter or something with a helicopter. And I see four. Um, the number four, four zero, four zero, six nine zero. I don't know for who it is. Um, I see cattle and sheep and a farm. And I see Proverbs 2, verse 2, and James 1, verse 5. And I see the word wisdom. Ask for wisdom, and God will give it to you. So I'm not sure for who that is, but I just feel that God loves you, and he wants to blow through you and give you new life and color and things through the book and um, yeah I just want to encourage you just to seek him and he will give you the wisdom that you need and um, then I see I think this is for Dan and Star I'm not sure um, and I see color and I see the color blue and I see the color purple and I see a cloak and God is covering the new baby with this blue and purple cloak. And God is saying, he's, it feels like God is saying that he's going to do great works for me, the kingdom. And I see 1 Samuel 18, verse 4, and Exodus 28, verse 33. I'm not sure what it is is exodus um but yes i just feel like god is saying that baby is going to do wonders and he's got that beautiful baby boy and he's going to step in your footsteps and he's going to do more that you've ever can imagine so yeah wow. thank you annaline it's amazing that's i love that we get to ch do church live because i think you would never have those moments and if that means anything to anyone, obviously it means something to us, and we're going to go look at those scriptures. But if any of those other things, please please connect with us. Email info at citylightsdubai.org. We'd love to hear from you. This is, uh, Annalene has operated in this before. Which, those, that is called a word of knowledge, where she, she had no foreknowledge about something, and she, God began to drop in her heart. And uh, this is an amazing, amazing moment. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We, we pray, Lord God, your blessing on every single home. I pray, Lord God, that you would be so close to us, that we would not, uh, that you'd not be far, that we would reach out this, this week, we'd, we'd point our hearts towards you, our, our maker, our king, and our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.
uh, and we will see you online next week. Let's keep praying that we can get back together. That's maybe April. Please, Jesus, have a great week.